Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. This is part two in my video tutorial on how to drive a large stepper motor with an Arduino. I actually posted this yesterday, but the first three comments were from folks who were clearly way more experienced in steppers and made me really think, okay, there's some better tests I should be doing here to run this thing through its paces. Um, I'll mention those comments now. Hopefully those users, users will chime in again uh, and forgive me if I'm mispronouncing them, but Viv, uh, Viznevesky com mentioned, asked about, I had put uh, the plate back on and I'd put two one, two, three blocks on each end. And after it was spinning at a high RPM, there's not much, uh, doesn't take a lot of power because it's got the, I think it would be inertia that's, uh, that's not consuming more power. So it's really just a question of the bearings in the stepper itself. Vanork had a really great comment that when you drive steppers at high speeds, they act as a generator which creates counter voltage to the driver and the torque of the motor depends on the amperage and the driver raises, raises or lower its phases, I guess, of the voltage to set the amperage that's consumed by the motor. If the speed of the motor is high and the driver can't generate enough voltage, the amps drop and so does the torque. So that's one reason why you want high voltage for driving uh, steppers with a lot of power at higher speed. And finally, Meocats mentioned, <laughs> of course, you didn't uh, lose any speed because you just added a little bit of paperweights at the end. You see how much you lose in acceleration and deceleration. So what I've got is a few different programs from the Accel stepper library, which I really like. And again, I'm doing this video because there doesn't seem to be other good info out here. Hopefully there will be soon, because frankly, I'm sure there's a lot of folks who could cover this stuff better than I could. But nevertheless, my goal is to teach you guys how to get something up and running that you can then tweak the code with and, and move some heavier weights or, or higher powered stuff with a pretty simple and pretty inexpensive equipment at hand. So let's look at this Accel stepper library. And I figured what we do is run run the code with no weight on the shaft, we're just going back to our little flag, and then we'll add our plate back on, see how it does, and then we'll add the plate with some weights. The question will really be not only the RPMs, but um, the ability to uh, accelerate and decelerate. Let's start with the potentiometer code. We walked through this in part one. It's quite simple. We have an analog pin three is inputting a potentiometer and we are simply reading that, we're mapping it, the input of the potentiometer opposite, so we're mapping it, 3600 is the high value, that's a longer pause, so that's slower. One is a, so the shortest pause, so that's faster. And then the way you control the stepper itself is you write pin nine, which is the step pin on the driver, high, you pause for the value of the potentiometer, or the mapped value, and then you toggle it back to low. So you're stepping in increments, if you will. So let's upload that code, and then we'll play with our potentiometer here. Okay, this is the slowest setting. That's 3600 microsecond pause. And if we go ahead and ramp up with our knob here, you can see we can go quick and we can go slow. And the important thing is we can go between them with, doesn't seem to hear any sort of clicking or problems. It can handle it fine because there's no torque on it. This reminds me of the folks who have made songs or music out of stepper motor, uh, including I think the Star Wars theme song, Imperial March or whatever that song is called, which is really cool. Anyways, you get the idea. Now let's open up another one called random. This is from the Excel stepper library and all, I don't even think we had to change the pins. And what it does is moves random amounts uh, at random speeds. So let's upload that and just see what it does with the, with the flag and then we'll look at it here in a minute with the weight. Okay, here it goes. So you hear there is some acceleration and deceleration.
So you get the idea. I ran this before off camera, and as you can see now, there is mostly slower movements and shorter increments, not the crazy high RPMs. By the way, that was uh, at full speed on the potentiometer program we ran a second ago. Uh, I mapped it out. That's uh, about 440 RPMs. The last one I wanted to run was one called Quick Stop. And again, these are all from the Cell Stepper library. I did misspeak a minute ago, though. The default program comes without this parenthetical here like that. You do need to add, in my instance, um, defining the stepper as pins 1, 9, and 8. Otherwise, it defaults to this. What this will do is, actually, well, here, let's upload it. This will go forward and then stop. And then it'll go backward and stop. Let's see. Is it doing it in the same increments? No, it appears to be different travel distances. Oh, nope, that came back to about 2 o'clock. Yeah, so that's moving back and forth to the same position. So that'll be a good one to see how it does when we put our plate on and add some weight. So actually on that note, let's do that. Okay. Okay, plate on. The uh, white piece of tape here is for this digital tachometer, which we can use at higher speeds or any speed to see our RPM. Let's upload our <clears throat> potentiometer sketch first. So there's the low speed. So it seems to be working fine. Now when you get up to a certain speed, you'll hear that clicking. I have to think that that means the motor is unable to handle that quick of an acceleration. Here it kind of stalls out there. Now if you slow, if you slow it back down, and you ramp up a little more slowly, you should be able to reliably get to full speed. Oops. Let's try it again. Having a hard time. I was able to get this uh, offline here to full speed without much problem. Yeah, not going to happen. Um, that's interesting. But nevertheless, you can see we've got pretty decent control moving around like that. Let's change to the random and see how that works. I can't imagine we'll have any problems. It is rotating slightly counterclockwise here. There we go. All 
I would speculate that the reason we're seeing that wobble is because you do have a fair amount of mass out towards the end here and when the motor stops it's not able to absolutely deaden that but we'll see what folks say in the comments below okay this isn't too exciting let's do the quick stop and see how that works okay so we stop just a little under nine o'clock and then maybe four o'clock or four thirty yeah so no problem there now let's throw some weight on now when I the version I filmed yesterday that I've taken down was where I used two one two three blocks <clears throat> let's uh, stop the motor I used two one two three blocks you know basically like so and I knew that that would be sort of a balanced load, which I guess I sort of subconsciously thought was a good idea, um, especially if you're going to higher RPMs. But I don't think high RPMs is what we care about here so much as understanding if it can start and stop it. So let's put them both on one side and just see what happens. And we're not going to go, um, we're not going to go crazy fast though, because uh, frankly, it's not not safe the way I've got it set up to go too fast. Okay, let's go back and start with the potentiometer code. We'll see how that does. I suspect we're going to continue to see that wobbling and jerking a little. Okay, so we'll ramp it up a little, see how it does. So it seems to be handling that okay. You know, you can ramp up. I bet if we go faster, you'll hear it start to, I don't know what the proper term is, stall out or just can't handle the torque. Now just for kicks. That's uh, 75 RPMs right there, just as a reference point. So that's handling pretty well. Now let's stop that quickly and see what happens. So there we go. That did not go well at all. Okay, let's try our random one. Oh, by the way, I meant to mention these are each just a few ounces under a pound. So we've got a seven pound plate and a total of two pounds in the steel blocks. So controlling it fine, we're just getting that wobble. Okay, again, not the most uh, exciting ver program. We'll do the quick stop, upload that. By the way, this stepper is actually the old stepper off my Tormach PCNC mill before I upgraded to their Polyphase Series 3 motors. This, um, and this was, was a really powerful stepper. When it was attached to a lead screw in moving the CNC mill table, um, if, you, if you had the spindle stall on you, you could easily snap a half inch carbide end mill off with the pressure created from this stepper motor. But again, that was driving a lead screw. So no problem here. The difference obviously is that this is a type of acceleration and deceleration. When we were starting off with the potentiometer, I uh, was just basically turning it quite quickly, which was, uh, causing it to, there was no, there was no smoothness to the acceleration and deceleration. Um, that's all I'm going to talk about, folks. Let me know what you guys think of this. Again, I'm not the expert here, but 
um, for lack of other content out there, this shows you how to get started and tweak stuff. Um, the controller I bought off eBay was about 50 bucks. Arduinos are, are cheap and the power supply is cheap, maybe 20 bucks. The stepper motor itself, um, this one was used. Those are going to be 100 or 200 bucks, I think, uh, for one this size. This is a NEMA 34, but you can control a lot of power with this um, and you can control it in a very easy interface uh, via the Arduino. So that's it for today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed. If you have, please do me a favor and comment below. And either way, I will see you guys soon. Take care.